Harry T. Moore came to Coco in 1925 to teach in the school that was in this building. A dedicated educator, Harry T. Moore also became a civil rights activist. I think he started his activism with what he knew best, which was education. And so uh, through his involvement with the Florida State Teachers Association, which was the black teacher organization, he filed the first lawsuit in the Deep South to equalize black and white teacher salaries. Black teachers, black principals made basically half what their white counterparts did. Uh, that was also the first time that he interacted with Thurgood Marshall. Uh, Thurgood Marshall had filed the first lawsuit, had won the first lawsuit in the country to equalize black and white teacher salaries. But that was in Maryland, border state, um, and Thurgood was working for the NAACP already. So Harry Moore wrote him a letter and said, we, we want to move on this uh, in Florida. And it was the first, I think, of many interactions that they had. Being a teacher, uh, particularly when he became principal of a school, uh, he saw the inequities, uh, not only in the school facilities, but also in the amount of money that the state was spending on black children versus white children. And of course, he was very much aware of the pay inequity uh, for black and white teachers. So he uh, had... Um, talked about this to a good friend of his, John Gilbert, who was the principal of the Coco Colored School, and convinced John to be the plaintiff in a lawsuit that he filed to equalize teacher pay. During that time, when we were all together, it was very, very sad, so far as I'm concerned, because I can remember going to churches where Daddy would ask if he could speak and, and tell the people about the NAACP and um, perhaps start a, a chapter in that particular church. And the ministers always waited until the benediction was said. And people, some of them had gotten up and, and left before they would let him say anything. That still hurts, even now. Um, so far, Daddy did teach black history because he taught all of us in fourth and fifth, uh, fifth and sixth grade. Uh, but it was not a part of the curriculum. He did it on his own, and I'm sure that's another reason why they fired him. Uh, but I, yes, we do need, right now, we need some strong black leaders. That, that's the main thing. And of course, yes, teachers should realize what my dad went through to get their, their salaries equalized. And yes, they should be members of the NAACP, but uh, I suppose they're still afraid as they were back in the 40s and 50s. That's, that's the only answer that I can give you. There were three big things that he worked on. One was teacher salaries, the other would be voter registration, and then the third would be lynchings. But um, really, this is another juncture where he and Thurgood Marshall came together. Uh, in 1941, Thurgood Marshall won the Supreme Court decision, Smith v. Allwright, that outlawed the white primary, um, which was the only election that mattered in the Deep South. Uh, Harry Moore immediately organized the Progressive Voters League in Florida and started registering black Floridians in the Democratic Party. Harry Moore, of course, being an educated person, an educated man, knew that power lay in the ballot box. And one of the way, if you cannot uh, elect a person uh, like yourself, then you try to use your voting power to vote for those persons who at least uh, express some interest in the, your concerns. And so he and... Uh, his good friend Ed Davis uh, formed the Progressive Voters League, uh, I believe in 1944, and they went about the state. That was a separate, of course, now uh, at this time, Harry Moore had already established uh, the Bavard County branch of the NAACP and had established other branches throughout the state, but the NAACP is nonpartisan. So they established this Progressive Voters League as a separate organization 
strictly was devoted to registering uh, black voters and getting them to vote. And, and they went about doing that over the next seven years or so. Uh, uh, the records say that they registered some 116,000 people. Harry T. Moore was killed when a bomb exploded under his home in North Brevard County on Christmas night, 1951. His wife Harriet died nine days later from injuries sustained in the blast. Many people believe it was Moore's voter registration activities that was the motive for the murders. Others believe it was his involvement with the infamous Groveland rape trial. Harry T. and Harriet V. Moore were killed 12 years before Medgar Evers, 14 years before Malcolm X, and 17 years before Martin Luther King Jr., making them the first martyrs of the contemporary civil rights movement. Their legacy has often been overlooked. In a way, I think they're like multiple tragedies. One is they were killed, and the murders have never been solved. And then, in some ways, it's almost equally tragic they were forgotten. Um, I feel like the most poignant epitaph, really, is he was killed three years too early. If he had been killed in 1954, after the Brown decision, he would be Medgar Evers. He was Medgar Evers. He just did it before anybody was paying attention. He would have been in every history book. Everybody would have known his name. But it was 1951. There was no civil rights movement. There were no TV cameras filming the dogs attacking children in Birmingham. The murders were not solved. It was really just forgotten about. At the Leon and Jewel Collins Museum of African American History and Culture, we remember Harry T. and Harriet V. Moore and their efforts to bring equality to all people. This project is sponsored in part by the Department of State Division of Historical Resources and the State of Florida. It's also made possible by the City of Cocoa and produced by the Florida Historical Society.